Hi all, today I'm going to cover one of the most important topic which is cloud optimization and the various techniques. This is very important for all the different type of roles such as cloud architect, cloud admin, cloud devops, even if you are a regular programming developer, you still need to know what are the different techniques and uh, this is most commonly asked interview question for all the different types of roles on the cloud. So let us get prepared with our answer. I have listed down few techniques here, but we don't need to really limit with these techniques. If you have observed or experienced few more techniques, please mention those in the comments so that I can pick it up for my other videos. So let us move on. Close man manual monitoring. Uh, and Azure Advisory, Reserved Instances, Part Instances, Use Discounts, Use Dev uh, QA Subscriptions, Bring Your Own Licenses, Auto Start Stop, Merging Multiple Services into One Based on the Consumption, Analyze Low and High Peak Traffic Hours uh, slash Days and Use Suitable TS uh, and Automate that Processes. These are the few techniques we usually use. Let me explain one after one with more detailed information that will give you clarity. So moving on, yeah, close manual monitoring. So this is a most commonly performed activity by Azure admins and DevOps to save the cost. So cleaning and deleting resources, for example, there are few resources which are not actually being utilized or leveraged or even they are idle for a certain amount of time. So you can simply trigger the emails to the respective stakeholders and take the confirmation that we are going to delete this particular resource because so and so reasons. Then uh, they will give you the consent or approval based on that you can go ahead and remove that resource so that you can save the cost. Probably say example you have maybe five Azure VMs but only three of them are being used and two of them are idle for more than a month or more than 15 days. So you can simply trigger an email to the respective stakeholders that these two instances are idle for so and so time. So your stakeholders will give you the consent and then you can go ahead and remove. That will really save the cost of that particular resource. Then coming to the uh, temporary backed up resources, this is a usually made mistake in all the environments. For example, you are moving the new version to the production while they are moving to the production they means your uh, production team or maybe you as a azure devops or cloud devops you yourself doing this activity and then for safer side you back up that all the resources and then you deploy the new uh, resources or new code into the uh, cloud so now whatever you're backing up that resource will stay on the same tier how it was on the production usually the production tier could be your premium p1 p2 p3 tiers that will really charge high if you back up resources are also on the same tier that really doesn't make any value so you can down tier for a certain time even if it is uh, going to be for seven days uh, if you are keeping on the tier like standard s1 or s2 type of tiers that will really save a lot of money for you so you have you can keep an eye on those type of uh, resources so that you can save the cost this is one of the most commonly performed activity by the azure admins even devops or even architects make sure uh, right tiers are used so you are using your dev and qa environments with p1 uh, premium tiers but it doesn't really add value to your people right to your consumption then what is the meaning so in those cases you can down tier them similarly your production workloads uh, do not have much traffic maybe you are seeing very low traffic of uh, 500 concurrent user but your tier is actually intended to the 10,000 users there is no meaning right so you have to always analyze the reports what it provides maybe performance insights like how much CPU is utilized or memory is utilized based on that you can take a call which tier is actually suitable for that particular resource or de deployment then you can save plenty of money for your organization similarly the production environments you can monitor and see whether they are running on the right tiers or maybe you are using oversized tier than it actually requires so the next one is backup retention so usually people keep backup retentions for 
maybe one month one year but your requirement doesn't really stay say that uh, probably you may request seven days or one month then in that case it doesn't add any value right so you can reduce your retentions so that you can even save the cost on that particular areas as well using elastic pools will really uh, save a lot of money for example if you have a sql uh, azure sql type of resources on the azure cloud then you can use elastic pools rather than using uh, the instances various instances for each of each one of your requirement auto scaling also will help you uh, to automatically scale up or down so that you can save money this is one of the activity under the manual monitoring to save your cost uh, organizational cost or cloud cost so moving on the next one is azure advisor azure advisor is one of the key component which comes from the microsoft similarly there are uh, features from other clouds as well you, so this will really help you to save a lot of money uh, it will automatically bring the suggestions i'm not focusing on the other areas of uh, azure advisor like high availability security operational excellence but i'm actually focusing on the cost side you can clearly see how much it is gonna uh, save you if you actually follow the recommendations which is uh, given by the azure advisor so just to give you show you i brought uh, azure advisor here you can see how much you can save 7327 usd dollars you can go deeper and find out what are the recommendations made and how you can save by making maybe the pay as you go kind of cost or you can even uh, enable auto scale on your azure cosmos db database or container there are different type of suggestions in case if you are using azure vms it may suggest you to use uh, 10 azure vms rather than using 20 or 30 vms based on the workloads you are actually consuming right now so these are these are a few important aspects that you can have a look azure advisor that is a, another technique that we use for cloud optimization moving on Reserved instances. Reserved instances is one of the key while you are selecting the type of resources. Like say, you are going to run the tro uh, you run the deployment or sorry, run the production servers for more than one year, two years, or three years. You have a plan. You have very clear plan that what you are going to run and how long you are going to run. Then automatically, this is the best option for you. Uh, under the I just selected Azure VMs here under the calculator. Uh, you have to select pay as you go or one year reserved or three years reserved these are the different options you can see three year reserved will save you 57 percent of the uh, with a 57 percent discount and one year reserve comes with the 32 percent discount so this will automatically save your plenty of money in case if you have clear picture how long you're going to utilize your resources definitely you may have question that what if i say that three years reserved instances i'm going to utilize but i'm not going to do that maybe after one and a half year i'm going to break the contract then there will be definitely a penalty for that so you can pay the penalty and come out of that uh, resources in case if there is any instance that uh, you don't utilize for that long period okay even there are some options it doesn't mean that you have to pay upfront all the cost but there is a penalty involved in that so the other technique is spot instances so spot instance instances uh, before i go to that let me show you the same option of the reserved instances on the aws as well i just went to the uh, cost estimator of the ec2 instance here and then at the bottom you can find reservation from uh, one year three years here you can find it uh, based on that uh, automatically your price will come down okay so this coming to the spot instances while creating your vms you can now uh, find your that option whatever the vm instance you are creating for the same thing you can say check whether that spot instances are available or not in case if the spot instances are available then you can save a lot of money again you need to understand how the spot instances work uh, because if you have a temporary requirement of one month or 15 days uh, for kind of qa type of uh, workloads this will be definitely a good option uh, selecting the spot instances 
maybe even if you have a temporary development of POCs or 15 for 15 30 days then you can even go go ahead with the Azure spot instances that's how you can save the money uh, on the cloud so I'll uh, cover the rest of the uh, optimization techniques in my next video thanks for watching my videos